On today's episode of Locked on Wild, what to look for in the final two games of the regular season. You're Locked on Wild, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And we welcome you into today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we are your team every day, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Locked On Wild is brought to you by Sleeper. You can download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, Alex Micheletti joins us to recap the uh, games over the weekend against Vegas and San Jose, which went about as you would expect them to go. We did see some nice performances from young players. And uh, we'll take that as well as looking ahead to the final two games of the season this week. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, credentialed Wild Media member. And uh, as mentioned, joined by Alex Micheletti. Potential that this is the final victory Micheletti Monday of the season. And uh, we have the San Jose Sharks to thank for that. Boy, they are bad. (laughs) That was was something else. But it flips on the heels of a uh, pretty hideous game against the uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. But the thing to take away, Alex, from the weekend was we saw Murat Huznadinov's first career NHL goal against Vegas. We saw Liam Ugrin's first career NHL goal against San Jose. And we saw Jesper Volstead get his second career win against the San Jose, uh, San Jose Sharks. So I guess as the song goes, the kids kids are all right. Yeah, this is like we've been preaching uh, for the past couple of weeks. Let the young guys play, and uh, um, it's 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 working out, you know, for some of them. And uh, yeah, awesome to see Murat. Uh, you know, he's been playing pretty well um, here late, and so um, you know that's such such a relief for him and Ogren. You know, coming in, um, you know, to the fall. You know that they have the the first games out of the way. They have their first, you know, first goal. First, both of them have a couple of points now too, which is which is great and. And Ogren, uh, it you know, on his goal, you know, he just uh, he got to the right area of you know where you know where to score, you know, just pounded home that uh, uh, rebound off the Brodeen uh, chance, and uh, yeah, just so cool, to, uh, you know, to have his family there, uh, you know, to, to see him score. So, uh, you know, perfect. <laughs> you know, San Jose was the the, the perfect team <laughs> for him to score. I mean. I remember us going back and forth uh, in messages that, you know, Ogren had, you know, a couple points uh, in, in under six minutes of time on ice. So oh. that was, <laughs> that was crazy. And, and Wallstead, uh, you know, you know, getting a couple wins here late, uh, albeit against uh, terrible opponents. Uh, it's still nice to, nice to get a couple wins, especially after how they did him, uh, you know, in his debut against Dallas. So, you know, good confidence for him uh, coming in uh, for training camp. Yeah, and it's it's a good way to kind of ease the ease the guys in um, against some teams that you know just if you if you throw them in against like a Colorado or against a Vegas or you know any of those other teams that the Wild have just struggled against so much mm. this season, uh, you're you're bound to have a bad time. And I know you eventually have to get them in against teams like that, but it's a good opportunity to just kind of allow them opportunities here down the stretch. And you talk about Ugrin's day against San Jose. All told, he played just under 13 minutes, had a goal, had an assist, two shots, um, and uh, also got a couple of face-offs as well. And as I tweeted out, and it it got some traction, uh, Ugrin now has one multi-point game in his <laughs> NHL career through two games. Uh, Marcus Johansson in 70-ish games this year has four. And a couple of them are against his uh, former team. 
So that uh, that is all fun and dandy. And uh, I'm so glad that we have seen as much um, as much in that spot on the second line as we've seen <laughs> all season. And I'm just I'm really looking forward to not having to uh, to gripe about that, at least through the uh, the rest of the summer. Yeah, there's going to be some really good competition. You know, you know, Marcus better better be ready because I mean, you know, Ogren uh, will be there. Uh, Riley Height will probably get a little bit of a, a shot too. Um, so there's finally some you know young guys that uh, you know could could give him a run for his money. And we also have to bring up <laughs> that also got a little bit of traction is the the everyday Marcus Johansson goal from John Merrill <laughs> and Alex Golagoski. <laughs> if he, uh, like you said, people that have been listening to to our podcasts and watching watching on YouTube, and uh, <laughs> who could have ever imagined uh, uh, Johansson from Merrill Golagoski goal? Just the the way they've been playing, and leave it to uh, San Jose for that to allow that to happen. All my chickens coming to roost all at once. Uh, that uh, I I got a little bit of a chuckle out of that, but uh, it was interesting. I was reading Michael Russo's extended chat with um, with John Hines about how the season is gone and what needs to be worked on um, during the off season. We'll have more reaction to it, but uh, I did find it um, interesting that Johansson and Freddie Goudreau were both called out publicly for their uh, lack of performance this season. And, you know, just just to kind of pull it back to Murat Huznadinov here for a second, you look at his stats overall um, in 14 games. He's played 14 games this season. So he has gotten a nice, he's gotten a nice cup of tea, obviously not enough to qualify to be a rookie season. So his rookie year will be next year. He's got a goal. He's got three assists. He has uh, six official shots on goal in the 14 games. He's got 19 total shot attempts, and he's won 45% of his face off, 16 hits, eight blocks. So he's just he's doing a little bit of everything. And I think it's I think it's interesting that you know you saw Ugrin paired with him, but I think if you look at where this team is at, Alex, they're going to go into next season with Jewel Erickson Eck, with Marco Rossi, and with Murat Huznadinov as their top three centers, barring some big change, which I think we all expect. There will be some sort of a trade done, but at least at this point, those are your top three centers, and honestly, compared to where this team has been at um, recently, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all, and um, uh, like like you mentioned too, Marat's just uh, he's just fit, fit in naturally too. And, you know, sometimes or a lot of the times it it takes um, it takes guys, especially when they're coming from overseas, a while to uh, adapt. And you know, he, it's been just a smooth transition for him. I think it helps having you know Kirill Kaprizov here to another Russian because a lot of those times if you know if you don't have another Russian you know it it, it can make the struggles even even harder uh, but uh you know he speaks a little bit of english has has some personality and uh uh it's it seems like uh you know Minnesota is a, is a good good fit for him uh, just get, getting used to the NHL uh, lifestyle because it's completely different in Russia than than here in, in Minnesota with just everything going on over there so um, you know good good for him uh, you know to have a buddy like curl here and you know that that's gonna you know deem well for your off too when he eventually um, get, gets over here he'll have uh, you know we're getting a little Russian mafia going uh, on the wild. So um, just kind of like what the Capitals had in the past. So maybe, uh, maybe we'll hear uh, something about Yurov at some point here. It just feels like that has gone completely quiet unless, unless it happened and I just completely missed it while being distracted by I, uh, many yeah. things. I couldn't even imagine, you know, just with the pressure uh, you know, to, you know, to stay, stay over there in Russia and, and stay in your, your home country's uh, league. Uh, so that, 
that that's got to be really eating at him and uh, it's a it's a big decision and he's so so young still too so yeah a lot lot going on yeah it's gonna be one that will have uh some ripple effects regardless of what happens and honestly if he comes here and he just decides to start here um that would be another that's... reason to try to free up some roster spots well that and if he if he does sign that's your ide ideal top six wing mm -hmm. uh and then you know you have Murat, you know fighting for you know third uh, line spot and, and ogren but uh i think if you're off signs that, that he's destined to to be in that top six uh position yeah. no doubt feels like a perfect spot for him is to just to just start off on that uh that second line on that wing spot and uh, you let him and Marco Rossi cook. You let um, you let Matt Zuccarello facilitate both of those guys, and then you just try to figure out what the heck to do <laughs> with the glut of players that make up the current bottom six. But that's a talker for the entirety of the off season. We're we're gonna have no shortage of time to be able to uh, take a look at those spots. But for right now, we just have the two games in front of us that will finish off the season. So we'll take a look at both games and kind of what we expect to see in both as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Reminder, listeners, it is Locked on NFL's Mock Draft Live coming to you this week at 6 o'clock Central Time, streaming on the Locked on Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube with a free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series dropping on April 17th, Wednesday, uh, at 6 o'clock Central Time to hear who the local lockdown experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. Lockdown NFL Mock Draft, April 17th at 6 p.m. Central Time, streaming live on the Lockdown Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, you can finally figure out who the Minnesota Vikings will be taking, because I know I have been sweating that ever since the season ended, so uh, make sure to tune in. Speaking of sweating it, Alex, final two games of the season, one final Western Coast, West Coast game tonight against the Los Angeles Kings. And if you look at the standings, an opportunity for the Los Angeles Kings. Basically, I'm just trying to see here in real time if this is a game that matters to the Kings in the slightest. So they are currently five points behind the Edmonton Oilers. Oilers have a game in hand. Feels like Edmonton's got that number two spot locked up pretty, pretty solid. They're gonna, <clears throat> uh, the Kings are going to play Edmonton again for the third Third year in a row, I think, and uh, that's what I I just do not like about this the the current playoff format because, uh, you know, those two teams absolutely hate each other. But uh, again, like it's the same thing. Colorado is going to play Winnipeg. Like you're getting some really good teams out right away. Like yeah. that that's super super unfortunate. And I I guess I should say too, it is a game that matters for the Kings because right. Vegas is one point behind. 
right. and they are deadlocked in the standings. And Vegas actually has more regulation wins than the Los well, about, Angeles Kings. How about Vegas last night? I mean, hurdle, of course. Uh, Naturally, the only <laughs> the only way they are able to get him is because of LTIR, and he gets the gets the game winner. He uh, redirects redirected the Jack Eichel uh, shot in overtime to beat Colorado. They came came from behind and that was a gigantic win for them over the uh, Avs. Uh, yeah. Tough couple of, <laughs> uh, game stretches for, for Colorado. So it's going to be going to be interesting to see uh, uh, how how they go uh, against uh, Winnipeg in the first round. Yeah. And I was I was talking to Isha for my soda pod hit that will drop uh, today. The difference between Winnipeg in like a game seven scenario playing at home or having to go to Colorado where the Avs are 39 and one on the season. Like the fact that they at this point, yeah, the fact that they at this point have secure, have, have held on to that number two spot with two games to go makes a difference. Yeah. It's, and it's amazing compared to um, last playoffs, you know, like when they played, when it played Winnipeg played Vegas um, and how much different their team is. Remember, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we, that last press conference, basically uh, they called out Blake Wheeler, that, which was nuts. You know, you know, yeah. your captain right, right there at, at the, at the press conference. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how they do against uh, Colorado. Rick Bonus not yeah. messing around, <laughs> and the Jets not. the Jets at the most critical time of the season, six wins in a row. So, <laughs> oh man, he's so good. Um, so tonight's game matters for the Los Angeles Kings, which is why I would imagine I would imagine it'll be Gustafson tonight. Um, since Jesper has, uh, Jesper and Flurry started the last couple, I think you get Gus one more start and I'm fine with that. I'm fine at this point with not throwing Jesper to the wolves against a Kings team that is going to, they're going to really try to do some damage here tonight. So I'm fine with that. And then final game of the season against the Seattle Kraken on Thursday, it's a 6 PM start. I have really no idea what to expect in this game because it is the final home game. You do have a few days in between, so I don't know if the team's going to make some call-ups. I, I'm not sure what to expect from that game on Thursday other than that it's at home. It'll be fan appreciation night, I do believe. And so you would imagine there will be some sort of festivities. Then again, what can you really festivitize in a season in which you are not going to make the playoffs and – just looks like there are a lot of questions that have to be answered over the off season. Well, how about how about that email that was uh, circulating to season ticket people that it was a fantastic year? Oh man, uh, that definitely had to they had to have used a third party AI you know company or that that that's a tough look. You'd uh, think I, artificial intelligence would know better. <laughs> yes. That, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, if the, if this is the future of AI, oh my goodness. <laughs> but uh yeah that uh it's it was a tough tough year at home you know they yeah. were you know we just uh and just I, I was just looking back at the at the schedule and it's like they beat florida right away and we were thinking oh here we go and then and then spurgeon got hurt and uh you know from there it was just a nightmare and a lot of i mean there was blowouts at home too which is which is a tough look, and they keep raising ticket season ticket prices too. So that that, yeah. that that irks people, no doubt. That there were so many weird games at home this season. Like I think one of the weirdest ones was that game against Columbus, where Columbus was playing on the second night of a back to back, and they still <laughs> got like they got like ninety shot attempts in the and game. And they had I been think. going through chaos too, you know, having to replace Babcock and. Uh, you know, Patrick Line being kind of a wall all, all season after what he's been dealing with, and Johnny Goudreau not playing well. Yeah, just uh, just craziness. It, hideous. Like I remember just watching that game up in the press box, and I'm like, "What is happening? Like, how is this Columbus team? How are they this fast playing on the second night of a back to back? Or are we just that slow? Oh my God, we might just not be. We might just not be good this year." Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was doing some some gymnastics in the uh, in the the press box, some mental gymnastics in the press box, trying to figure out what was going on. And 
just set the tone for the entire season, which we'll recap in full uh, for next week because obviously there will not be a postseason for the Minnesota Wild. So we'll recap the season in full. I'm going to do the state of the state um, on Friday. And that, that's just going to be, you know, an assessment of kind of where things are at, the good, the bad, everything else in between. So you can, uh, listeners can tune in for that. It's coming up on Friday. Um, do you think we see Flurry on Thursday against the Kraken? Or do you think we see Jesper? Or I had kind of come up with the off the wall theory that maybe you see both. Although that would be something you would do, I think, if Flurry was a hundred percent definitively going to retire to get him like an ovation from the fans at some point during the game. But it just seems like all the steam is trending towards him coming back. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to read. You know, he he had that interview that he did with, uh, with Michael Russo. Um, you know, and he talked about you know, his post-retirement home that they're building in Las Vegas too. So it's just hard to get a, get a good, good read on if he's for sure coming back or not. Uh, I think, I think you have to give him that game on, on Thursday, regardless yeah. if he's coming back or not, because you don't want your last start in the NHL, uh, you know, to be giving up seven goals. And, you know, I, <laughs> I don't think they wanted to, you know, to keep him in there for the entire time versus Vegas, but they knew that they were on a back-to-back, and uh, I'm sure they didn't want to throw Jesper in, you know. No. So they just let Flurry eat it. Um, but uh, I, I don't think, you know, if if this is truly, if he is going to go out, he's that he's going to, you know, say that, hey, uh, I, I need, I, I need to play this, you know, I need to play this game. Uh, so. I, I think I think you do see him in there, um, and uh, I think the fans will give him a really good good ov- ovation too. He's been just a fan favorite ever since he he joined the Wild, and um, you know just uh, give uh, give Ye- you know Jesper uh, you know has confidence now going in uh, to the fall. No need to to get him in uh, you know again here, and who knows with Gus? <laughs> it's uh, that's going to be. You know, as we get going with the uh, with the off season here, that's probably going to be the number one talker. Do you, do you keep him or not? Yeah, uh, I'm just looking at the numbers for the goalies from October 10th to November 27th. Um, Mark Andre Fleury had an 8.75 save percentage, and yeah, so it wasn't just Gus. Been, you know, yeah. uh, I, I I do they bring up Gus a lot, good. but they were both 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 bad. Gus actually had the better save percentage at 881 <laughs> Which is crazy think, of yeah. the two. And that's those starts. those two got Dean fired. And uh, I mean, well, Boldy yeah. wasn't playing well either, but uh, and Krill was was banged up. But, uh, you know, it came down to the goalies for for Dean getting getting fired. Yes, it did. Now, there are a few milestones that are still in reach for uh, particular wild players. And so we will take a look at uh, just what is on the table for uh, Milestone Watch to finish the season as we finish today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Sleeper. We are in the final week of the regular season, and so if you want to win big by picking your favorite Minnesota Wild players, This is your final two games to do so with Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports, especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick your favorite Minnesota Wild players, Kirill Kaprizov, Matt Boldy, Jewel Erickson Eck, You can throw Brock Faber and Marco Rossi in there too and pick whether they will record more or less than their sleeper projections for categories such as goals, assists, plus, minus, and more in a given game. All told, it's eight player categories that you need to pick more or less in. It takes less than 60 seconds to set your lineup, and if you're a fan of other sports, you can also play Daily Fantasy NFL, NBA, MLB, and college football on Sleeper 2. Use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKDOWNNHL. 
See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wilds. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wilds your first listen each and every day. And a reminder, we've got you covered for tonight's Locked on Wild postcast, as we do each and every game. So make sure to tune in for that tonight as well. Alex, I have the stats up for the uh, season for the Minnesota Wilds. And Kirill Kaprizov obviously now has the top two scoring uh, seasons in Minnesota Wild history. He has three of the top ten um, in his three – in his three seasons, in three of his four seasons, he has a top 10 scoring season in Minnesota Wild history. Like, outrageous, absurd, just insane. And he sits right now with 93 points. Now, with two games to play, seven points in two games is not impossible. But probably, probably a little too tall to get to 100 points this season. But he's won assist away from 50, which would be, I think, the one, two, three. It'd be like the fourth time ever that uh, a player has had 50 assists in a season, or actually one, two, three, four, five. It'd be the sixth time that a player has had 50 assists in a season in franchise history, which, granted, it's not that long, but still, saying franchise history is something. So what do we think? Do we think Kirill gets to, let's just say, 95 points? Do we think he gets two more points, maybe one more goal, one more assist in the final two games to get to 95 points in the season? Yes, I think so. I mean, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Seattle is awful. I, I think yeah, he, he tends to own these these really bad teams. Uh, you know, we look how easy it was what he ended up with three against uh, three points against San Jose. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, and I would expect uh, Zuccarello to at least be back for the for the home game. Uh, you know, so, you know, they didn't travel. So, um, you know, having his uh, good, <laughs> good, good buddy and uh, and disher of the puck to him. Yeah, I think think he can can get there. No doubt. Um, Matt Boldy is probably the biggest one right now from a uh, statistical milestone standpoint because he sits at 28 goals right now. He's at 66 points. Do you think we see Boldy get to 30 goals with the Kings and the Kraken on the schedule? Keep in mind, Boldy does have a hat trick in his career against the Seattle Kraken. Do you think he gets two goals in the final two games? Yeah, I mean the the power play seems to be clicking. I, I definitely think they they could do that, and who knows the motivation of the Kraken later this week because you know they they they've been out of it for a while, and uh, you know it seems like teams are really really trying to to tank at the end here to get the best yeah. lottery chance, you know, to to get Macklin Celebrini. So you know Seattle's going to be right in the mix the, there for for that. Look at me stat padding here with uh, – there was a tweet that Michael Russo had yesterday that I think just sums up the entire season perfect. In the top 11 teams in the draft have the opportunity to move up for the number one pick. Minnesota Wilder at 12 right now. So you should I think it's be... impossible for them to get you know into that, which uh, it's like – Right on, just like Mike Mike said in his in his tweet. So another generational player, and the one time that they're in <laughs> in the lottery, they can't even they can't even lose to to get to to him. <laughs> so here we are, stat padding. Um, beyond that, I think I don't think there's anything else in reach for Kirill. Um, and it's amazing for him too to get close to that assist total too because you uh, as we know we always think of him as just a you know goal scorer but you've seen you know his playmaking abilities be on display especially on the power play too uh yeah it's it's nice to see uh his growth there in that uh, side of things let's talk Brock Faber for a second I have a tweet from Brett Marshall that uh, that I would like to pass along and then we'll talk about the potential for him to get to a um, a milestone as well. Uh, Brett tweets, with two games left to go, Minnesota Wild rookie defenseman Brock Faber has racked up seven goals and 38 assists 
for 45 points. Some notes on those numbers. The Minnesota Wild franchise record in assists and points by a rookie defenseman. Um, that's Brock Faber has that right now. Uh, he's two off of Curtis Foster's goal record of 10. Well, three actually, but he's three goals off of Curtis Foster's goal record of 10. Most points by a wild defenseman with 45 since Ryan Suter's 47 in 2018-2019. The seventh most points in a season by a Minnesota wild defenseman. The record is 51 by Suter in 2015-2016. Do we think Faber gets to the 40 assist mark by the time the season is done with two games to play? That's going to be close. So, you know, <laughs> it's... Uh... It all kind of depends on, you know, if he gets that power play time too, that's, uh, that, that would help uh, him for sure. Uh, and, uh, uh, but, you know, yeah, like I said, um, you know, if, uh, if Kirill and, uh, and Boldy are going to get there, um, you would, you would think Faber's going to be involved in those, in those goals, uh, just mm -hmm. the way he's been moving the puck lately. Um, you know, I think, It'll be it'll be close for for Brock. <laughs> I I hope he does. You know, just uh, to help him in his Calder um, case for sure. Yeah, that would uh, that would be a nice uh, consolation prize for like you said, uh, stat padding is the way this the name of the game. Gone. That's basically it. From a goalie's perspective, really the only one would be for Philip Gustafson to get twenty wins. But I, I it's. I mean, it would be it would be a nice it would be a nice Fine. number. Twenty feels like twenty feels, especially with a team that has two guys that have essentially split starts. Um, twenty feels like a good accomplishment. So he could potentially get that if he starts tonight. I have no idea how the goalie rotation is working out. Um, that ha it can't it can't it, you know tonight can't go as any worse than it did the last time they played the Kings. So yeah, it really <laughs> they have only everything to look you know look up after after that, uh, especially and then another national TV appearance too. Why are we on national TV against the Kings? <laughs> Uh, um, from a special teams perspective, that was the last one I wanted to uh, to look at here just to see where the Wild are at in both categories. From a power play perspective, the Wild are 0.3% behind the Los Angeles Kings uh, for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They're in 13th right now. So power play goal or, uh, or two here or there could maybe bump you up to even above Detroit if you can get one. If you can add one percentage point, to your power play, you would jump into just about the top 10. Penalty kill wise, um, you are going to probably be pretty entrenched in third to last, which is yikes. But, uh, that, you know, it's another. Uh... Another reason why Dean got uh, got let go too is they just could not uh, could not figure out that that penalty kill and no that you know if uh, you know Patrick Dwyer you know continues to to be the coach he's got they got to get that figured out you know if they can't get that that higher um, they'll be right in the same uh, type of position because as we know special teams is the the name of the game and uh, just yeah. uh, it's been a it's been an absolute nightmare the past couple seasons not just this season as, no. as we <laughs> as we saw versus uh, versus Dallas in the playoffs last year too. The Wild are seventy six penalty minutes away from a thousand. So if they have a night like they had the other, when was that <laughs> where the there were like eighty five penalty minutes? <laughs> Game misconduct to everybody. Yeah, maybe is... if they do that, maybe they can get there. Otherwise, that's probably that's probably daunting at this point. And honestly, like unless it's in one of those like end of game scrums, I would I would rather not see that one broken because that just means. We've we've seen that play out all season. It's I'm, a nightmare. I'm, no one I'm needs good to with, see that. I'm good with not seeing a march to the penalty box in these final two games. Like let's just let's just not have anybody suffer any severe injuries. Right. Any just type of injury. Just uh, it's like let's continue to see Ugrin and Huznadinov build off of what they have done so far, and um, mostly let's just. Let's just get through them without any sort of catastrophes. And uh, 
we'll see what happens. We'll see you on the other side, as uh, as they say. And as mentioned, we got you covered for tonight's game. So make sure to uh, tune in for tonight's Locked on Wild postcast. Then we'll have you covered from the X for Thursday's game against the Kraken. And after that, it is full bore to the offseason. So thank you for tuning in today. Make sure to hit the like button before you head out for the day. We have new episodes for you every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.